Since the release of KSP2, I wanted to visit the Rings of Dress, and today we will do exactly this and send a space station there. But not only that, there will be a little bonus at the end of the video, so keep an eye out on that. But first, let's get to the build of the space station. And the build of the space station you can see in your background of the video. So what I wanted to do is a one launch space station that can reconfigure itself once it arrived at rest. Now the reason why I didn't do a multi-launch space station, which arguably would have been cooler, yeah, but the problem with that is, is it's that the whole thing becomes extremely wobbly and I don't want that. I don't want 50,000 Kraken attacks. One thing you have to know about this mission and the footage you can see in the background, this was recorded between 1 and 4 a.m. So I was... I was really tired, but I wanted to get the video out for you guys. So I have a bit of understanding if maybe at some point I took a bit of the lazy approach. But nonetheless, I think this is a really, really cool mission. I mean, the rings of dress look really cool. I didn't expect them to be that cool. And Dress is pretty much my new favorite planet, which I never expected. I like Dress in KSP1, but in KSP2 it's a lot cooler. But first of all, let's speak about the modules I'm building in the background for the space station. Now, I will build it in the end configuration and after that make it more compact for the launch. So first of all, we have this habitation module I'm building here. This is the main habitation module for the Kerbals. On top of it, you can see with the little cockpit, the uh, Mark 1 cockpit, you can see the control and service module. And what I'm building right here is the airlock to, I don't know, collect some samples of rocks maybe. Who knows? So the airlock has a special design, which I quite like. It's a bit gimmicky, but I think it's cool. And sandwiched between the airlock and the living module are the solar arrays, which the space station also has. Now I gotta admit, just for safety purposes, in case in, I don't know, the solar panels don't work, I clipped in an RPG, but you can excuse that, I think. And underneath both of those modules, you can see a storage bay which has a payload inside I won't reveal till the end. It will be the bonus part of the video. And since this is a mainline mission video, there is also an easter egg in it, but I won't spoil anything. You can earn another role if you want, if you're a collector of roles, but you have to be a bit more precise this time and uh, look out for certain details. And at the end I just added a lot of RCS to maneuver the space station through the rings if needed or avoid certain rocks. Maybe there's a bigger rock in the ring, I don't know, they can avoid it uh, with the RCS. And then it was time to work on the transfer stage. And for this transfer stage I didn't use the big circular ball tank. I know you wanted balls, but uh, sadly not. We will use this tank because this tank is more appropriate. We will have more than enough fuel at the end. We had way too much fuel actually. And then you can see how compact we can build this whole thing so that the fairing doesn't need to be extremely large, but it was already large enough to tumble the rocket over multiple times. And it was 2 a.m. I just wanted to get the launch right, finally. Like at some point, I had like 10 tries and the rocket flipped and flipped and flipped and flipped and it was getting 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. At some point, I got frustrated. So first, this was the first design where I had like an onion staging with a bunch of boosters, but this led to a lot of tumbling and a lot of fails. But just look for yourself here. But yeah, after flying it very recklessly, I finally got to the staging. But then this happened. Like, what, what is going on here? And then it tumbled over again, and so I had to start all over again. And at some point I just thought, you know what? This design is just stupid. Let's just switch out the boosters completely. So here we are back in the VIP switching out the boosters and then it finally worked guys. And yeah, I also added vector engines just for vector control. So let's get to the launch. And we have 
lift off, ladies and gentlemen. And the song is called The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the News, featured in Back to the Future, the first part. But you should all know that, because that is classics, guys. But yeah, we are on our best way into orbit. And now I took a bit of a steeper ascent, just because then the rocket wouldn't tumble over, which kinda helps getting into orbit if you're not tumbling over. But yeah, later on the rocket dis decided to do a flip nonetheless, but our apoapsis was already out of the atmosphere, so I didn't really care. And now it looked cool, so hey, bonus points, style points. And then we just had to do a long old orbit burn, because we had such a steep ascent. And after this super weird staging where just everything fell apart, we are basically in orbit and we can detach the fairing and after that extend the solar panels. And now there's nothing in the way of us getting to the rest. So let's go to the rest. If you're asking yourself why the intro stage fairing is still there, that's a bug. If you load the quick save, the intro stage fairing will appear again. But yeah, we are on our best way to the planet with the with the most rings in KSP2. Well, it is the only one, but hey, we are going there. And here we are getting away from Kerbin. Isn't this beautiful? And then we had to do a very, very expensive mid-course correction burn to get ourselves on the correct plane, because the rest is inclined. And with that, we have to do that maneuver. And sadly, we had to do it very close to our periapsis, which was inefficient as hell. But you can see the nuclear engine has decoupled. We are running nuclear now. And here is Dress. And then we can decelerate around Dress and capture into an orbit. And after that get the inclination right and slowly maneuver ourselves to the rings to match the orbit of the rings. First stage here, we match our apoapsis to the apoapsis of the ring. And after a little maneuver, we are ready to also increase our periapsis there. But first of all, let's fly to the rings. You can't really see them at the moment because sadly, sadly, they're in the shadow, but it will get a lot of use uh, later on. So let's increase our periapsis and then we are fully engulfed in the rings. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me present you the rings of dress. Isn't it beautiful? I don't know, I, I love those rings. It's my new favorite place in the entire Kerbolder solar system. And here you can see how it looks when you fly through the rings. There are little stones and we probably get hit by one, but gladly they don't have collision because well, our, our hydrogen tank would have exploded by now. So uh, glad that this doesn't happen. Then we can reassemble the space station, but I still haven't really told you what this special cargo is. So let's reveal that real quick. And it is a lander, because we will also land on Dress. But not only somewhere, we will land inside of the Dress Canyon. Exactly. What would the Dress video be without the Dress Canyon? It's a lot to visit the Dress Canyon when you visit Dress. And we will do that. You can already see a bit of the canyons down there. Now it's obstructed by the lander. But yeah, we have to first of all lower our apoapsis and then our periapsis. And now we are on a landing course towards the Dress Canyon. Now landing in it isn't exactly easy, but gladly I packed enough fuel so we can return and possibly in the future they could, the Kerbals could explore more things. But here you can see the canyon again. It looks super cool. There's even a second side canyon. But look at those rock walls. I mean, this looks so amazing, guys. The canyon is also uh, about two kilometers deep. It's insane. Like, the work of the artist who designed the dress is... I don't know, I love him. If you watch this, I love you. 
But yeah, then we can get to the landing on Dress in the Dress Canyon. And of course, we gotta put the flag there because why not? Yeah, and now this lander doesn't really have landing legs because we have those fuel tanks that kinda stabilize it and surface landing legs because it had to fit in that really, really small space in the space station. But then the Kerbal can get out on a little EVA. And again, look at this beautiful surrounding. Isn't that amazing? It really looks like real rock, I don't know. It looks a lot better than the KSP-1 dress cannon. But here we are, proud moment, planting a flag. How awesome is that? I don't know, I don't know enough adjectives to describe that, but hey, who knows? Anybody makes mistakes, right? So here, another view of the dress cannon. And with that, I will leave you for today. But if you wanna see how I put a base inside of a volcano on Ike, click on screen. And as always, you will have a little picture show of the best moments from the mission. So, goodbye guys.